YouTube, what's going on guys? Got a great video for you here today. I know I always say that, but it's true. This one's uh, a bit different than usual. I got some Black Ops 4 League play going on in the background, but the main part of this video is gonna be talking Black Ops Cold War and all the changes they've made from the beta to the game that comes out Friday. Today is Wednesday. So without further ado, we're just gonna get into it. Starting day one, new maps to play. So uh, one thing a bit disappointing, guys, there's only eight 6v6 maps in the game. That's right, so if you played the beta, there's only gonna be two maps that you haven't played for 6v6. Uh, super disappointing. Hopefully they can add more as the season's coming and stuff, but I mean, that's the lowest number ever for any Call of Duty ever made. And it's 2020, we're getting new systems. Should be more, not less. Um, definitely super frustrating there. Uh, new modes since the beta. So these are all standard modes um, that you've seen in pretty much any other Call of Duty. The only one specific to Black Ops Cold War was in the beta, VIP mode, which was kinda, eh, whatever. Um, search and Destroy, they've added. Uh, I prefer that all day. So we got Search and Destroy, Free For All, and then basically just all the normal game modes they added hardcore as well. There are much better changes coming up, I promise. It's all doom and gloom right now, but let's start talking about some of the good ones. So, a few new weapons. The weapon pool right now is looking a little low too, but I've seen some rumors about them putting in three for just for season one, so uh, things to look forward to. So they've added the FFAR, which if you're familiar with Black Ops 3 is the FAMAS. Bullfrog SMG, uh, which looks just like the Bison. Uh, it basically is the Bison. M60 LMG, DMR, M79 Special Launcher, Weapon Balance. This is something I really like to see. So Assault Rifles, Toon General, Assault Rifle Performance, closer to Krig 6 and XM4, Beta Performance for better balance across the class. That's a good change. I felt like the Krig 6 and the XM4 kind of dominated. Increased AK-47 recoil. I don't know if I like that one. That thing was pretty hard to control already. Submachine guns. Reduce SMG effectiveness at longer ranges to counter the dominance of the class seen in the beta. So, dominance of the class seen in the beta, definitely true. The Uzi, the Milano, and the MP5, you could fry people at range with those and it was almost like the ARs were only good at super far away, so I'm glad they kind of I'm glad they kind of made that uh, change there. Light machine guns increased LMG damage output to improve the effectiveness of the class. Um, I agree with that because of this next point: uh, increased LMG ADS times. If it's gonna be real slow and clunky, it's gotta outperform the other guns. If you're pre-aiming with an LMG, if you took the time to get there, set up there with slower movement and stuff, you should be rewarded with a, a powerful weapon. Sniper rifles, this is a really controversial one. Adjusted aim assist to feel smoother, yet require more skill and precision. That's a pretty vague statement, really. Require more skill and precision. Feel smoother, I guess, is good. It did feel a little, like, snappy. I don't know how to describe it exactly. But more skill and precision. Sounds like they're making it harder, so we'll see. I did think it was a little bit too easy to snipe in the beta. Um, if you were getting hit by a good sniper, there was nothing you could do. Slightly increased sniper rifle AD. ADS time. That one's really good. I know people love quick scoping, but uh, at a, in the beta it was at a point where you could start shooting the guy and as you were hitting him, as he was taking damage, he would be able to aim down sight, shoot you, and kill you. It was just like a losing battle, um, even if you got the first shot, which it shouldn't be that way. Sniper scope glint will now display more regularly. Uh, that was something I noticed in the beta too. It kind of sporadically popped up. It wasn't there every time. So good to see that's uh, gonna be more consistent. Pistols, decreased burst fire pistol hit fire accuracy, reduced burst fire pistol max damage range. Yeah, that burst fire pistol, um, unique to kind of the Black Ops series. Altogether, it's been in, I think, Black Ops 2, 3, Four, and now it's gonna be in this one. Uh, has always been good and it kind of sucked in the beta, so I'm happy about that. In the beta much, recoil and sight alignment. Cleaned up issues with bullet direction and recoil to feel more intuitive and responsive. In the beta, the location of the player's bullets was always based on the direction of their weapon, which could have a slight deviation to the eye view perspective through the sights. These should now line up better across all iron sights and optics, providing more precision while ADS firing. Um, I mean, the last sentence there kind of sums up the change, and it's definitely a good thing. You want to be able to tell what you're shooting at uh, and see it clearly. This is a big one. Aim assist tuning. 
adjust a number of aim assist perimeters to provide a more expected feel across weapon classes. So one thing I noticed in the beta and the alpha was just aim assist felt way too strong. Um, this change here that we're reading, sounds like they made aim assist more consistent across different classes of weapons. I'm not sure if they changed it overall right now. I think it's it's just too strong. We'll wait to see how that one feels, but um, it's good that they're paying attention to it. Aim down sights, adjusted ADS transition to make them smoother and more fluid. Good. Adjusted ADS sway to provide more dynamic feel while reducing weapon rotation. That's good. Adjusted weapon pushback when firing in ADS to address cases where optic models can get too close to the player camera. That's good as well. You want to be able to see where you shoot at. Attachments that added more. Here's a good one. There are now barrel attachments that offer shorter barrel length for increased strafe speed movements, either when hip firing or ADS firing. This provides players with greater options for leaning into movement as a hit option. Uh, this is something that I noticed in the beta. All the movement mechanics were related to the stock of the weapon, and there were some other really good stock um, options I wanted to use, but I couldn't because I just feel like movement's super important. So that's good, I'm gonna be able to adjust my movement with the barrel and maybe pick something else for the stock. So that's a change I'm really happy with. Dual wield, dual wield pistols, how can you not like that? Weapon levels, uh, bumped from 40 to 55, expected in the full game from the beta. And stationary turrets, increased use radius of stationary turret. Uh, I don't really get stationary turrets much, whatever. Movement, sliding, this is a, a big, controversial mechanic in the game uh at the casual especially the competitive level it has been in the past it's been in pretty much every cod since ghosts it was definitely very aggressive in this game at the beginning it just kind of felt out of out of place with the rest of the move way too aggressive way too fast it was faster than sprinting or anything else so um let's see what they did sliding short and slide length uh probably a good thing but not really the the problem anyone has with slide uh, reduce slide speed. Sliding is intended as an escape mechanic or quick entrance into crouch or cover. Not intended to be overused during engagements or to be advantageous in close quarters. We shortened the slide length and reduced its speed to address these goals. Ending a sprint to fire is now faster than sliding to fire. In the beta, it was faster to fire your weapon from a sprint by sliding than by simply ending your sprint to fire. This has been fixed so that ending a sprint to fire is the fastest way to get your gun up and sliding to fire is no longer faster. I personally like that change. Um, sliding to fire should be a mechanic that you can use if the opponent has the jump on you already. You can make a quick counter to the fight, but you don't want to enter every fight sliding because then you end up with every fight's the exact same thing. Um, you bro both... You and the enemy player both get there at the same time, you're both going to slide. Um, when the slide should be used is that if they kind of have a beat on you, you slide, counter them hitting you, and you start hitting them back. Not kind of, oh, panic, let me slide, like the panic knife was kind of back in Modern Warfare 2. Um, you don't want to just press a button and have a way out of an engagement or a way to win an engagement automatically every time. So this is something I like so far. Got to see how it plays. Um, I do like using the slide aggressively. Hopefully this fits in somewhere in there. Um, mantling. Increase speed for all mantles. That's really good um, for how fast-paced all Black Ops games are. And the beta in other aspects was. Um, they brought the mantling up there. I, I don't see anyone who can be mad at this. Other than some guy who sits in a window and doesn't want people mantling it. We don't care about that guy. So, Score streaks. Additional score streaks, all new score streaks here. Combat bow, armor, care package, cruise missile, VTOL escort, and gunship. Do not see the Blackbird here. It was in a previous build of the game. Uh, it's being rumored that they're going to bring score streaks in as the game progresses. I've seen that rumor a few times in previous gods. It's never happened. Um, I'm really hoping it does. People love the, uh, the VTOL, the Blackbird, whatever you want to call it. Um, I hope it's in the game. Earn rate. Improved score event tuning and score streak earned potential across all modes. Increased score bonus threshold at a 10 kill and 15 kill streaks to make high streaks feel more rewarding and to help boost to higher end score streaks. If you get to a 10 or 15 kill streak, you earned it. You should get more score for every kill while you're there. I'm happy with that change.
Increased attack helicopter damage from 5 hit kill to 3 hit kill. That thing was pretty lethal already. That's a little scary. Chopper gunner, slightly reduced chopper gunner duration and damage. I don't like that one. Um, the duration, I guess, was a little long. The damage, I don't think that needed to be done. Cost balance adjustments to all score streaks. Uh, doesn't say if they went up or down, we'll see. Uh, duh, 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 blah, blah, blah. Added variations to score streak cooldowns to allow for more interesting player choices and strategy. Also, are reducing low end score streak spam. That last part there, low end score streak spam. I'm happy about that. I think everyone is. The rest of it is very vague. I'll we'll have to see what that means. Spawns, general spawn adjustments across all modes. That's expected. Uh, don't care about enemies and gun runs. Good stuff. Perks, flak jacket damage reduction reduced by 5%. Reduction reduced. So I think that means explosives are going to do a little bit more damage if you're using flak jacket. Um, I didn't get to use it that much. It was one of the last perks you got in the beta. Don't remember if it was powerful or powerful or not, but 5% I don't think is going to make or break it. Big one here. Paranoia. Updated the sound for when an enemy is aiming at you with paranoia equipped. Paranoia, origin paranoia originated in black out and i feel like the noise was perfect it was like a whisper but uh the paranoia in the beta was extremely annoying this high-pitched noise and equipment frag improved frag throwback speed i never noticed that i've never thrown back a nade i've always wanted them to have like a kick feature where you kind of just do that it takes a lot less time and it would make more sense rather than picking up a live grenade uh, the one thing with frags i don't see here is it takes way too long to throw them in this game um Hoping there's a perk or something to reduce the time it takes to throw frags and stuns. Um, stim shot, they re increase the cooldown on that. It was a little overpowered. I do believe it still has a place in the game. We'll see how it plays with that. Decoy, don't care about that. Um, features, these are all things you just expect from going from a beta to a full game. So I'm not going to waste my time or your time reading through them. Um, go look at them on yourself. Audio, this is a big one. Uh, polish volumes and sound fall offs for weapons, fully audio, fully audio ambient systems and map transitions. So this is just basic improvements from beta to the full game. Obviously they're going to polish the sound off and stuff like that. Proved, 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 all good stuff. Acoustics, polished, tuned acoustics. So they're just making the sound better, putting the polishing touches on it. All the details are here if you want to really read into it. Um, but obviously the sound's going to be better. Added a music player, um, select tracks, different audio presets, all good stuff. And then that's the end for what I have in this video. Um, there is more to the blog, the pre-launch FAQ. Um, there's some questions down below, some interesting questions about um, how it's going to transition to Warzone and some other good stuff in there. So if you head to Treyarch.com, blog is at the top right click on that you can check out these questions and uh yeah that's really it for this video guys i'm super excited to play cold war comes out thursday at midnight i'm gonna try and play a little bit then but usually the servers are kind of destroyed when everyone tries to get on at once but friday saturday i'm not getting off i'm playing all day and uh yeah we do we're gonna go for our goal kd of like 2.5 we're gonna try and fry some people so I'll be streaming on Twitch too, and uh, until next time, see ya.